so in this video I'm going to be going through aggregate demand and as you can see here I have a graph for us where the black line is the equilibrium spending and this blue line is the aggregate expenditure. This is our first aggregate expenditure line. We will have two in the one at well, while we keep on going through this video. And let ha let's be let's have this point, this point that intersects this point that intersects with both the equilibrium line and the aggregate expenditure line, the equilibrium point. So this point will be our equilibrium uh, income or equilibrium output. And let have let's have this equilibrium output be y1, and let's have it reflect down to this graph that I have in the bottom, where I have p the price level as the vert or vertical axis and the output or income as the horizontal axis. And you can see here that I have a p1. Well, this P1 is totally arbitrary, and we'll have this point here be the equilibrium price level, I guess. And this P1 ref reflects the price level in this economic situation where the, where the blue line intersects the black line. And that is P1. Now, given the, situ the situation I'm going to describe next, what do you think will happen? So if P1, if or if P, the price level falls from P1, from P1 to P2, and let's have P2 be some arbitrary point here that falls. So let's have this be Y, Y1, and let's have this be y2 and let's have this be p2 so then we get something like this so if we have a price level that falls from p1 to p2 we'll have something like if we draw a line through these graph through these two point arbitrary points that I have we'll have something like this and this this point this uh, line that I drew is our aggregate demand curve and going coming back to our question if P if the price level falls from P1 to P2 what do you think will happen well what will happen is then our consumption our autonomous consumption will go up our autonomous investment will also go up our exports will also go up and these three factors look kind of familiar, right? Excluding, uh, excluding government, we we have something that we already know, and that's autonomous expenditure. So if price level falls from P one to P two, then consumption, investment, and exports rise. But that is not all. Also, and Z. A marginal propensity to spend also increases, and we know that Z is equal to uh, B times one minus T uh, minus M. And I believe I went through this in a couple of videos past. And M, as I can tell you now, will fall. M is our marginal propensity to import, and I'm sure I told you that in the past videos. And altogether, Z would actually increase from Z1 to Z2. So let's have these uh, these changes be reflected in our in our graph. So we know that the price the price fell from P1 to P2. So it fell from P1 to P2. Then the consumption, investment, and uh, exports rose. That means the autonomous expenditure rose. So this rose from AE1 to AE, AE1. It rose from AE1 uh, to, to AE2. So in essence, this, this blue line it pretty much shifted up. And that is what will happen to our graph. So let's have this be AE not two. This was AE not one. Let's draw this 
new line that we have. And this will be our new AE2. And this slope would be this slope would be slope C2. Because our marginal propensity to spend actually increased from Z1 to Z2. Now all this kind of makes sense in if we think about it logically. If the price for some good falls from P1 to P2, but now we'll have to uh, we'll have to uh, like we'll have to make this. Let's imagine that this good is actually the whole economy. If the whole economy, the prices level of the whole economy fell, then assuming that our income is still the same, then we'd have to, we could spend more. Our consumption, our investment, our exports would rise. That's why our Z, our marginal propensity to spend, also rises. And since Z rises, then why would it be import in the first place when our, our products is so low? We would export and we would export and not import. And that is why overall Z rises. And one more thing I want to say is is when we have y1 equals p y1 how, how are we going to calculate y1 and y2 so we calculate by p base times q1 and so on i taught you this in one of the earliest videos i did for this series and i'm sure you remember it and y2 is p base times q2 plus and so on the reason why we're using base numbers and not the same price from the same year is because nominal prices don't tell much. So as a short note, we're, we're using base because, uh, because nominal, because nominal doesn't say much doesn't say much and that is all I have to say for this video I hope you learned something today and look forward to the next video